thank you, Cheryl, for the opportunity, and Thomas, uh, great, great uh, uh, conference. Uh, I'm loving every second of it, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Yes, uh, I'm not sure if it's a shift, but it's been talking about modern and upside construction. I was glad to see the Confederation Bridge. I worked with a company. We had 85 cranes in that uh, project, and I see, so I did see the red uh, cranes in that project as well. So, Cheryl asked me to look at BIM, lean prefabrication and modularization. So I, I look at that and see what I can fit it in this uh, 15 minutes uh, presentation, and I'll show you what I do. Really, I look at, uh, I go to the factories, uh, work with this industry for probably almost uh, 10 years now uh, period. Uh, there are lots of low-hanging fruit, uh, and I, when I walk in the company and a factory, I tell them, I'm going to increase your productivity by 50%. Uh, Dr. Mazarhe, I'm not sure, I haven't seen him this morning in the room. He said, you can't say that. It's difficult, it's dangerous uh, to say that you can improve efficiency by 50%. And I'll show you some of these low-hanging fruit uh, that everybody can do. Uh, there is a factory inefficiency, efficiency on the front end, drafting and design for manufacturing. And there is a lot of low-hanging fruit on site, what you can do, and in the office as well. So let me share with you some of those, and I will go through some of the cases. I took this picture from a factory, which they make uh, four or five hundred homes a year, and this is a floor of one of the homes they make. They made 800 of these floors. So I took, a, I had in the room about 40 people who, from the factory, asked him what you can do to increase your efficiency. Let's see the. Uh, increase your efficiency by 50%, reduce the ergonomics and the physical demand by 80%. Uh, describe the, the, the floor is made out of uh, eight foot wall, eight foot, which is two by 10, and they make out, out of that 74 feet of those. So they have to put one next to each other, and then they put the joist, and somebody move, move with the gun, with the cables, with the, with, the, with the hoses, and make five nails on each one of those, go 75 feet this, 74 feet that way, 74 feet this way, then they will put the second lamination, and they go 74 feet this way. So my philosophy, where you work is not where you do workouts. Workouts could happen in the gym, not to be fit where you work. And then uh, this fellow will make drills for the uh, electrical or for the plumbing, and so on and so forth. You can see the inefficiency, and I ask him, what can you do using the same tools you have, increasing your efficiency by 50%. So I'll show you in a graphic format, which I did show them how they do the work today. So they put these uh, eight feet long, they make out of that 74 feet. And, and it said, says this is the best machine they ever had, and it's been working for uh, as long as the company exists, about 45 or 50 years. And then from there, they will put them together in the floor. I did show them how they work today. And uh, key to that, you see the people moving with this, tripping around, and then he has to go, and really, it's a very good uh, gym place to be fit, and you can really work for a long time. So, it is all wrong, really, and you do that, and they do that for a long, long time and every day. So, I look at the backyard in the factory, they had a drill machine that has a six foot bit, a drill bit, and I said, why don't we use, I can work an hour, or maybe a day, I can make work worth for a month or two, just by pre-drilling in advance, these things. The second philosophy, which I'm going to tell you four things or five things what I do. Uh, fix the tools, fix the people, bring the projects, bring the material to the people where they are. Don't let the people move around. They love multitasking, they love going around, talking fishing trips over the weekends, and you can't find them when you need them, when you need them really. The second is pre-assemblies. Focus on sub-assemblies, pre-assemblies, pre-assemblies. If you can put two pieces together, that's, a, that's a, an enhancement on in a productivity in a production line. Challenge the material you use. Instead of eight footers, you can find a pre-engineered wood, and that will give you the full length, and that's, and, uh, and that's what is really important uh, for the factory. So, in a sense, if I fix the people, fix the tool, sub-assemblies, I can increase the production by 70 to 80 percent, not 50 percent. In th some places, I might be successful in 5, 10 percent, and overall, 50 percent in achievable. The next step I looked at it, when we make, when we build the homes. A home is made of many, many, many walls. And the way we build, uh, in North America, we are stick builder under a roof. And I really mean it, and that's what, if you go to visit any factory in North America, they really move the work from outside to an indoor environment, and they get the harness the power of an indoor environment simply. Uh, just one, one thing they do. So you have to square each one of these, 
and this is a, maybe a, 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 a two foot or two feet or three feet wall or whatever. So they make it the fault the footer the plate are out of uh, 100, uh, an, 80, an eight foot, cut it, waste a lots of that. And I, I look at it, so the students look at that and said, well, if they can make a full wall 40 feet long, as long as the table can handle that, why don't we merge these walls? And today the factory I work with, every house, every wall is 40 feet wall. We can put them together, whether it's closet wall, bathroom wall, they put interior wall together, exterior wall together, and the increase of the efficiency was doubled the next morning we started this process. So, and what we call it the multi-wall system now. And these people, they don't care what they build. They build walls of 40 feet every day. And that's what they really build. The power of the computer, which is the 3D model, the BIM model, which uh, Cheryl asked me to talk about, is the one you need today more than ever before. So the other things I look at. OK, that's bad. OK, can you put, kill it all the way down? I'll put it back up uh, later. Sure. Yeah. Is it done? I can yeah, go ahead, yeah. yeah. So I, I want you to look at, so they asked me how to predict how much does it take to put a stud in a wall. So I'll show you something here you can see. And you can see by self there is something wrong. So he, this guy has to fit it and push it in. He grabbed a tool which was not part of the machine. So that tool was in there, and I've seen them kicking with the foot. And I didn't take that because uh, we didn't want to show the faces. The university doesn't allow me to do that. So, and this, now I, they want me to predict exactly how many seconds it takes to put this stuff together. So there is no way I can do that. So the challenge was the product is wrong. So we asked him to put an engineer do it and look at the difference between the two. So the hammer is gone. The minutes or seconds uh, are predictable, exactly how many seconds it needs to put that particular piece of stuff. And I can tell everybody how long it will take to build the house really. And each one of these machines, we have the first time, a full time, a full employment of RFIDs. Each wall has a, a tag, and we, we were surprised to see it's so inexpensive, 15 cents. It costs the tag. And there is a reader in every station, so I know exactly the loading of each wall, how long it does it take in real estate in the factory. So it's a 100% 100% deployment of RFID uh, within the factory. We don't use it beyond that, really, uh, as of today. You look at something was good in the past, but wrong today. So this is a wall, and then on top of that wall, the roof will come. So they had decided they can save money because they have a lot of uh, uh, OSP uh, waste. They can cut these pieces of OSP and put them, these pieces of OSP, they can cut them and reuse them. But there was a good idea for a month because they had so much waste at that time Within a month, they run out of waste. So they start cutting from real lumber. And I asked, when you did that was 32 years ago. And they've been doing it for 32 years. I said, well, no, no, let's go back to put the full pieces. And I can save about two hours uh, uh, per wall. If they build lots of walls, I, can, I told the factory, you can donate every year one house to Habitat for Humanity just by changing that alone. So there is a lots and lots and lots of waste in the, in the process. And they do that for other things. And we start to, I call it interrogations. I interrogate what we do and how we do it, the material we use, the tools we use, and so on and so forth. By the way, Cheryl cheat because she started with five minutes, but uh, on me, no. <laughs> so this is what we're proposing now uh, to change from what was a good idea at one point in time to something that, uh, no, no, just uh, I'm good there. <laughs> The other things I look at the, the tools they use. This is a nail gun, which is an ideal. You can use it while standing, and you don't have to nail the floor. So we talked to the provider of the nail gun. I said, well, can you give me pneumatic uh, instead of a screw, it will be a, a nail. Because the, the wall, you need to screw it to the joist to avoid squeaking. And they came back with the technology within a week that a, a nail, a screw would be, instead of a screw, it, it have a combination be it a nail, a screw, increase the production of this. You can't imagine how, screw, how many screws. Thousands, thousands of screws, they go into the floor. So that increased the production by probably three times or four times more than what uh, used to be. So walk you through some of the work in the factory. So sub-assemblies has been happening now uh, with this particular factory. Look at the machine. 
I have my students can predict exactly uh, within within a margin of uh, probability within uh, a scale of seconds or or minutes maximum uh, what it would take to build a wall for a particular house and then uh, and you can see here he's building multi walls he doesn't care the computer tells him what to do so the machine uh, product comes to him and I evaluate the space he need where he move around how much space he need that particular station was mixed between machine and human. This one here is more human. This station is more machine. And now the machine can work alone. I know people will say, well, I don't care. But again, the machine takes time. So instead of having one, we asked to make it double. So now we have two heads that we work together. With this, with, so the, as, you, as you can see here, there is really no human interaction with this. So we need to assess. Uh, we have sometimes 50%, 50-50, 70-80, it depends what, what station you work on. And then uh, you move on, eliminate the fear of lifting, and if you can look at this wall, is really more than one wall. This is about four or five walls made in one single wall. And the company, they have the handling 40-foot wall every day, and they know how to do it, and the machines, uh, they, they put all the machines needed. Then I move to, people love volumetric. They make a box, and start moving around exactly the same with the ant, ant uh, colony. You can see us as ants if you watch it from top. If you speed up the, 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 the process of the machine, you can see people moving really in and out, in and out. So I am against volumetric, work in 2D. And you can see here, I can, uh, the real estate that wall is taking is just limited to a small, uh, a small space behind them. The wall moves on and they can keep moving, you can add a window, you can add a door, you can work from both sides, and you can see the efficiency was about 80% in this particular move from 3D to 2D. The second stage, well, people said, well, if you put something finished product, it's very hard to make model or off-site construction because you can't go and start cutting. And it's the biggest challenge, how I can put siding and it took us a while to learn how to make the siding that when you go outside in the field, you don't cut. So it has to be fit and perfect. And that was done. And now every house has been built with siding on it. The next step would be the lifting into the crane, onto the, on the, on the truck. And I'll show you, let's say, this single family home building. They call themselves the six hours builder. They can build a home in six hours. They lock out. So they lock the door behind them in six hours. Some of the more complicated will take two days. So between six hours and two days, they can close the door, which the siding on, uh, bathrooms are all installed, uh, no fixtures, no plumbing, no drywall, nothing at the moment. So we're working with them now to move to closing uh, the walls. So that basically, what could, uh, you see this happening, and you walk out, you go to work, come back, there is a neighbor <laughs> house which you've never <laughs> seen before. <laughs> key, key really the drafting and design up front. Uh, they have more people on the second floor than in the, in the factory floor. We know exactly, exactly how many nails goes to every house. We know exactly how many grams of, of glue goes on top of the joist on the floor because the machine does the glue, the machine does the nailing. So we, that's what's the power of the, really, uh, of the building information model with this. Now, learning so much, I moved to what we call it commercialization. University of Alberta now we're involving and discussing how I can make these machines. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, any machine that made in North America was distractive, distract the industry, was wrong machine. Because everybody bought the jig table, which is American or Canadian made, and then three months down the road they throw it away. I can, today, if you want to buy, you can buy them. People can give you money just to get rid of them. But how come the German, why they think differently? So the German machine works, the Canadian, North American doesn't work. The other things, which I'll show you some of that a little bit later. So. I promise increase in efficiency, reduce in, 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 in factory space. So this is the layout of the factory where the, the roof is made, walls is made, floors are made, and then assembled here. And then they end up assembling that into 27 to 30 stations. So I said, can I reduce that size to half? And the target today I have, by the end of this year, will play a soccer game here with all the families that are working in this factory for more than 40 or 50 years. So it's a wasted space is being used. As long as you have the space, the same thing, your office or my office, your desk and my desk, we, it's filled with things which we don't need. I learned the hard way, but... Uh, so now, how we can really make efficient use, bring the work from 3D volumetric to 2D uh, uh, work, and this way you can guarantee 
I can have predictability, I can really know what is going on and how things will go with this particular uh, process of uh, manufacturing. From here we're moving to machine base. So instead of uh, moving around the full pieces, it comes in length. You don't need a full automation, I just want to demonstrate so you can really build very cheap uh, uh, system and instead of having the machine controlled by a computer, this is machine controlled by a human. Again, it increases the efficiency without having to invest money on the uh, outset of the uh, uh, mechanization. Uh, focus on sub-sub-assemblies. I can sub-assemble windows and doors. I can sub-assemble connections. If you bring a wall uh, to a connection between walls and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, you could do that easy and in, with relative ease and with simplicity as well. But you need to focus on drafting and design uh, for manufacturing in advance. Now I know exactly how many seconds within the small margin of error it takes to put whatever components I have uh, prepared. Go back to my presentation. So just uh, to summarize here, focus on uh, fixing the tools, fixing the people, use assemblies, multi-wall system, interrogate what you do and interrogate also the uh, uh, the tools, the material you have, it may not be the right material. It could be uh, cheaper than uh, engineered wood, but it's not, it's killing you and it's making, really, you are wasting money or, or every day by the fact that you did not interrogate that particular uh, piece of uh, material you have or, or product you have. So, if you are interested, I will organize another conference called Modern and Offsite Construction Summit. It will be, we, did, we haven't really decided whether it will be spring or fall 2016. You will hear about it uh, uh, down the road from the CRC uh, members. So, uh, I'd like to share with you one of the projects is uh, the last. So, this is a project in, in, in New York or in New Jersey, how you can replace seven bungalows with uh, five new buildings, and you can do that in one summer. So, I need your voice here if you don't mind. <coughs> So that shows you the project that you could be, you can ship with bricks outside. Uh, all the materials in there, connections is ready. So this is uh, this conclude my presentation, and I think I'm almost running out of time. 